Hello again, YouTubers, Solomon SpongeBob 101 back here again on the SpongeBob channel. Today we are reviewing episode 20 of the Patrick Star Show, The Little Pat Skulls, and the prehistoric Patrick Star Show. The hypnosis states Patrick learns what Grandpa's childhood was like. Also, Cave Pat hosts the show with his cave family. Let's dive right in. The Lil Patskulls is hands down one of the most impressive Patrick Star Show episodes thus far. I really like the storytelling format of the episode and having a bulk of it be in 1920s black and white was amazing to watch. The episode begins with Patrick watching a very dull show featuring a traffic light changing colors, silly start, and Grandpa seems to think so too literally torching the TV with a flamethrower. He introduces Patrick to a photo of himself and his friends from way back in 1927, a group called the Cupbed Kids. Patrick isn't particularly interested in story time, however, and he is convinced to use the time machine to go back in time and meet the group in person. Just as he arrives in 1927, the Kelpbed kids are being told off by a police officer and given a can to kick. They do so right into Patrick's face. Patrick is super excited and asks to join their group, and with a little wardrobe change and some paint, Mini Patrick is now sporting the correct color scheme, and they continue kicking the can. Patrick accidentally kicks it a bit too hard into the lawn of a haunted house, and it's up to- okay, it's not really a haunted house, but you get what I mean, it's supposed to be scary and all that. It's up to young Grandpa and Patrick, of course, to retrieve it. Along the way, they are attacked by a rabbit toilet, only to be saved by one of Hoops's, Hoops. Man, the character of Hoops is just genius. The toilet also reminds me of Tinkle, but a little bit more ravenous. As the Kelbed kids make their way through the house, they are slowly picked off and ejected from the premises by the security system. Eventually, Grandpa and Patrick fall through a chute in the ground and end up in the basement where they encounter Old Man Jenkins, who is behind this entire security system in the first place. Turns out all the weird stuff happening in the house was due to Old Man Jenkins trying to keep people out and also hide from the cops. The Kelpbed kids who were ejected do call for help from the policeman from earlier, and he shows up and narrowly avoids getting crushed by a falling piano. Reference to fear of a Krabby Patty here, I feel. Anyway, it turns out that the reason why Omen Jenkins was so fearful of intrusions was because he was making contraband ice cream in the era of ice cream prohibition. So a yeah, really nice use of the context there. Um, it's just great. He is almost caught in the act by the policeman, but, but Grandpa and Patrick save him by eating up all the ice cream before the tub is found, earning them Oman Jenkins' favor. One thing I didn't really understand here is why does Oman Jenkins look exactly the same in 1927 as he does like right now? Weird, but Patrick returns to the present and still in his miniaturized black and white form and agrees that experiencing real life adventures is in fact more fun than watching boring old television. The grown up versions of the other Kelp Bit kids arrive at the door for another round of kicking the can, a heartwarming ending indeed. I'm not sure why Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff are portrayed as being as old as Grandpa though. This does make the main series timeline appear even more separate from that of the Patrick Star show. The plot is fairly impressive. I like the underlying idea that experiencing things in real life is much more fun than watching TV. Then again, if you think about it, The Patching Star Show is an animated series. That kind of means we should watch less of it. Seeing more of Grandpa's past, specifically when he was young, was really nice, and having a band of friends to adventure with, plus a silly ice cream issue, made the episode excellent. It gets 9 out of 10 from me. Animation gets 9 out of 10 as well. Aside from the use of the devil and angel TVs, which was a pretty lame trope, every scene in this episode was really nice to watch, ranging from Patrick mindlessly drooling at the TV, having it burnt to a crisp, Patrick becoming a kelp bed kid, their antics in Jenkins' house, and eventually them reuniting in the present. Super awesome! Unique Characteristics gets 10 out of 10. I say this episode is a really simple but fun way to expound on Grandpa's character, but of course making an almost entirely black and white 1920s style episode with fitting content along with it gives this episode major plus points. Overall, The Lil Patskulls gets 28 out of 30 from me. 
Now, moving on to the pre-story Patrick Star show. Honestly, it was not as impressive as I hoped it would be, but it did have some great moments nonetheless. The episode begins with a prehistoric version of the intro to the Patrick Star show, introducing us to the prehistoric Star family who live inside a volcano. Gotta love them eruptions. First, we have Patrick having fire on, like, you know, literally fire, as a special guest and then getting burnt. Nice callback to the fire problem in the prehistoric episode UG. Next, it's time to watch the sea urchin and snail fail show on a boulder. I really like the pair generally. It's so dumb, it's funny. Later, prehistoric bunny calls Patrick over for breakfast but is barked at when he can't find any bugs to eat on Squadina's back. Really gross, honestly. This starts his hunt for food, which takes up basically the rest of the episode. He first finds the vegetables in the fridge, sad. Why they would have a fridge or anything like it in prehistoric times is not explained. Then he finds a civilization on the ground who attack him with weapons when he tries to lick it. Um, yeah, Patrick probably deserved that. The ice cream man comes by right on time, initiating a hunting scene where Patrick wants to capture the ice cream with a giant spoon, similar to how the blue jellyfish tried to capture Spongebob in a net back in Jellyfish Hunter. Unfortunately, Bubble Bassosaurus, so prehistoric Bubble Bass, shows up and eats the ice cream cart and the ice cream man in one bite, initiating my favorite part of this episode. This was so satisfying, so Patrick bulks up and gives Bubble Bassosaurus a well-deserved bashing and subsequent explosion. This was really quite strangely satisfying. I don't know, maybe it's just because I don't like Bubble Bass as a character, but you know, <laughs> it was fun to see. Patrick then tries to eat Cave Grandpat's laundry and is stopped only for Grandpat to tell the story of how he hunted for food as a microscopic creature and then how the tables were turned on him. I actually kind of like this scene. Um, it's animated really well as well. Patrick is then ejected from the volcano and lands on Cave Granny Tentacles' grill and then into her tar pit to cool down, mistaking it for a swimming pool. The cave star family all dive into it only for cave granny tentacles to have the second lost laugh because the one who gets the lost laugh is Bubble Bassosaurus who returns and swallows her whole. So in the present, workers discover the cave star family alive in the tar and are put on display at the museum. The present day star family comes along and laughs at their prehistoric predecessor's stupidity but instantly end up regretting it when they get stuck in chewing gum and then are gobbled up by the skeleton of Bubble Bassosaurus. It's kind of weird how the present star family doesn't feel as like connected to their prehistoric predecessors because Technically speaking, if their prehistoric predecessors were stuck in that tar the whole time, they couldn't have, you know, continued the family line to lead to the current present star family. So I'm not sure how that works, but you know, it's a cartoon, so sometimes things just don't need explanations. I thought the plot was decent, it got off to a great start, but this episode is really solely about Patrick looking for food and then ending up in a miserable predicament in the end. There's lots more prehistoric stuff that they could have used to put on a full show at least. That's what I thought until like the breakfast segment because the fire and the snail fill show parts were really nice. So, you know, it gets 7 out of 10 for me. Animation gets 8 out of 10. Lots of crazy scenes in this one from Patrick shaking hands with fire, not expecting the consequences, having his tongue decimated, hunting the ice cream cart, and of course my favorite, beating up Bubble Bassosaurus. The chase scene with Grandpat as a microscopic creature was really nice to watch as well. Unique characteristics gets 7 out of 10. I did like the prehistoric theme of this episode. You know, it's not a common one, but as I mentioned in relation to the plot, it felt a little bit lackluster given the context. Think of it as just a standard Patrick Show episode, but with a prehistoric overlay. Overall, it gets 22 out of 30 from me. So that's all for this review, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about these two episodes, and make sure to subscribe, like. I'll see you guys again in the next SpongeBob video coming real soon. Until then, bye!